Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe, and this is Games with Gabe, and this is the next episode in the coding a 2D game engine in Java series. So, in this episode, what we're going to be doing is fairly quick and simple, but it needs to be done. We're going to be cleaning up a little bit of code, but we're also going to be enabling the picking. So, I'll actually show you real quick to what I've got done. We're going to be basically making it so that you can click on an object, and it pulls up its properties panel over here, and then you can just change the color right now because that's all we've got which is still pretty cool though because you can now go and change the color of any object and you can click on them the next logical step would be to create a gizmo system where you got the arrows and stuff and then you can move them around which will be our next step but for this episode we're just gonna be getting this done because it's pretty simple and it's pretty quick there's gonna be no explanation on what we're doing really a uh, visual explanation because it's pretty straightforward all right without further ado though let's just get started <laughs> So to do this, we are going to first reorganize a little bit of our code because I don't like the way that some of this is turning out. So first of all, inside of our IAM GUI layer, we have this game view window that we're using, right? And the game view window is currently completely static. I don't like that. It's basically the same thing as a global when you have a completely static class. So what we're gonna do is remove the static keyword from all of these functions because that's the way it should be. When we do that, we're gonna get an error though. And that error is just gonna basically say, hey, we're using this in IAM GUI layer, we need to be able to have like an actual instance. So we'll change this to lowercase g, and then we'll go down here because we're using it over here as well. We'll change that to lowercase g as well, and then we'll just provide an instance to the IAM GUI layer. So I'm gonna go up to our variable declarations and just say private game view window, and then that's just gonna be game view window. Then we're just gonna shirk our responsibility and pass it to somebody else and say supply us with a game view window. And then we'll just say this dot game view window equals game view window. Actually, do we even need to do that? No, we really don't need to do that. So let's <laughs> remove that. We can just say this is just a new game view window because it's a parameterless constructor. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just create that dependency directly in there. And then you'll see we get compiled with no problem and everything works the same as it was just a second ago. Next, we're gonna go into here and we're gonna create a new class and call this properties window. And this is going to be the properties window in our actual game scene. So right now the properties window is just this thing right here. It's called inspector. Uh, so maybe we'll change this to represent properties instead. But basically we'll just get that working a little bit better. Right now what's happening is we have this thing in our scene. So if we go to our scene class, we've created a function called scene IAM GUI, which then calls regular IAM GUI, which just isn't desirable. And this wasn't a very good way of doing this in the first place. Reason being, why the heck does the scene have the active game object? The scene doesn't need to know about the active game object, right? The scene doesn't care about whatever the active game object in the editor is. What cares about that is the properties window right now. That's the only thing that cares about it. So a better place to have this would be inside the properties window. So we're going to copy this and we're just going to paste that into our properties window. And then we're going to create a function. We're just going to call this public void uh, I'm GUI. And this will basically be our IAM GUI function. We'll go back into the scene and we will strip all of this out. And then we're just gonna completely remove that function because it should not be there in the first place. This is much better. Now we'll go back into our uh, properties window. And then inside here, we'll just paste that code that we just took. So that basically now the properties window is the one in charge of this. And we're gonna add another function here, just call it update, take in delta time and we'll take in a scene and we'll call that current scene. And this will basically just be in charge of when the user clicks the mouse, then it'll update whatever the active game object is because this properties window is the only thing that cares about the active game object. We will have a gizmo system that also cares about it and we'll update accordingly whenever that happens. Now we have an error in I'm GUI layer because of this refactoring. So you can see the errors over here too, uh, the little red lines. So we'll go into here. This is now expecting the parameters. So or actually, no, this is now gone. We just took this function out. So just change that to IAM GUI. And then over here, we're going to say uh, properties window dot IAM GUI. And we are also going to say properties window dot update DT and current scene. Now let's actually go and create this properties window object. So we'll go back up to the top, add another object up here, call this properties window and just paste that. Then we will go ahead and say this.properties window equals a new properties window. 
Now that logic has been offloaded and is now in the properties window and the scene doesn't care about it. Let's try and build this. We may, yep, we're gonna get an error because we referenced the active game object in here, which was never a good fit anyway. So we'll just delete that code. This was inside of level editor scene too, uh, right up here. And so we'll just remove that code because we don't need it anyways, because now, there we go. And we don't get a properties window anymore, which is to be expected. That's fine. We'll fix that in just a second. Now, how do we get that properties window in there? Well, I kind of alluded to it. We'll be doing it inside of this update method. And this is where gonna be the new stuff is going to sort of go in. But even then, it's really not that bad. So uh, if we go into our window, we can literally pull out some code that we didn't hear. Remember, we were demonstrating to see if our picking works. So we did this whole if and then we just print out whatever pixel or the ID that we clicked on. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go into the properties window, paste it into our update method and just hit OK to import those things. Now it's going to say, OK, I need a picking texture. Now this we will and I'm also going to change this to private because no reason for that to be protected. We'll need a reference to the picking texture that is being used inside of the window. So we'll just say picking texture, picking texture, and then we'll make a constructor and we'll just say properties window. And this takes in a picking texture now. So this is going to have a cascading effect where we're going to have to update a couple more classes to represent this. So now I'm GUI layer is going to give us an error because it says, hey, we need that picking texture in here. So we'll just go ahead and say we'll take this into our constructor as well. And then we will go ahead and just pass that along. Then we'll go up one more into the window because the window is creating the I'm GUI layer. And now we can finally pass in this picking texture that we have here. So if we just copy these and move them below this creation, then we can go ahead and pass in that picking texture. There we go. This is nice. This is much better than creating static functions, which are just global functions. This gives us a nice clear chain of dependencies, right? The window has I'm GUI layer dependent on it. It also has a picking texture that it is dependent on, which is because the properties window depends on that picking texture. So nice clear chain. We know exactly what's happening now. What are we going to do? We're going to say, well, the active game object equals, and then we'll just say current scene dot get game object. And we're going to create this function in a second. So what this function is going to do is it's literally just going to say, okay, you give me an ID, which remember, this is what the read pixel function returns. It's an ID of a game object. You give me an ID and I'll return you a game object or null, which is good. If it's an invalid ID, it'll return null. So Let's go into our scene and see how to create that real quick. We'll just go right below where we have add game object to scene. And we'll simply say public void or actually public game object get game object. This takes in an ID, which is the game object ID. And then we'll go ahead and we will just use a fancy Lambda expression that Java gives us to find something in a list real quick. So we can get this thing called an optional which is basically just like uh, null or a game object, if it is a game object. And then we'll just say res result equals this dot game objects. So this is a list dot stream. And then we'll use some Java 8 features here, which will basically just uh, use a Lambda to make this stuff a little bit easier. So we'll say dot filter. And then we'll say uh, game object where the game object dot get UID equals the game object ID that was passed in. So what this does is this says, hey, uh, filter this list, game objects list, to every game object where the game object UID equals the object ID that was passed in. This should only return us one game object. So then we'll say dot find first, which just gives us the first result. And then we'll just say return result dot or else null. So basically this just says return the result if the result exists. If it doesn't, then or else we'll just return null which is basically what we'd want to do. If we didn't, then it's going to give us an error because right now that's just uh, optional. So we just have to add in this clause just to make sure we're making it explicit that we are okay with returning null. Now, I believe we should be good properties window. The error goes away and we're all fine. And let's make this a little bit more explicit too. We'll say int game object ID equals, and then we'll do that. Then we'll say active game object equals current scene dot get game object game object id there we go now it's very explicit what's going on here okay let's run this and see if it all works as it should so if we click on an object we get an inspector 
And if we change the color, let's change the color of that object. We click up here and we're changing the color. Cool. This is awesome, guys. And this is pixel perfect. If I click outside of here, notice how the inspector window disappeared because I didn't click onto an object. If I click just below this cloud, it doesn't see it. If I click over in this blank space, it doesn't see it. And that's because of the picking that we enabled. So this really highlights how powerful that feature that we just did was. I mean, this is great. Now we have pixel perfect picking. Doesn't matter your zoom level because it's going based on the pixel you're clicking. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, and we have an inspector window that pops up for us now. Very cool. Let's go ahead and change the name from inspector to properties just because this is our properties window. There we go. And that should be about it for this one, right? Yep, I'll put it down here. All right, so another very quick episode. Sorry I didn't do a physics episode this week. Once again, I did not prepare. I need to prepare for those because otherwise they'll be very bad. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And I think I'm going to have 600 subscribers by the time this video releases. So thank you for that. That's awesome. Uh, let's see if we can get a thousand by the end of the year. That'd be super cool. <laughs> And our game engine is really starting to come together, guys. We're going to implement gizmos next week, which will be another really cool feature because then we can move these things along the gizmos, you know, click on the gizmos and everything, and we can hopefully rotate them. Another thing that the game engine really needs is some camera movement. Right now, the camera's in a fixed position. We can't really move it around or anything. So that's another to-do item that will probably come right after we do the gizmo implementation. That is it though, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.